Hello fellow old schoolers and welcome to the second match of the Tournament of the Mountain of Madness. This time we are watching Composition Ace, uh, uh, another match from that, and I'm facing off against a big beater deck here. And I have uh, the deck picture of it here. Uh, he's won his previous match 2 to 0, just like me. Uh, a lot of big creatures here, and I couldn't find any animate deaths or... Um, all Hallows Eve or anything, so I don't know what the strategy is here. I would have imagined this is a like a reanimator deck, deck with that. Uh, it's a single rook egg, but a lot of like Shivan Dragons, Tetravos, three Soul Canal of the Swarm King, Sushis, uh, Cosmic Horror, Mahomochi Jens, uh, you name it. Just big, big creatures and some Moxen and Fast Mana to get them out and just punch face with it. So, no real uh, subtleties here, just a big. <laughs> Uh, a big fella here punching really hard so we're going to see uh, uh, quite the creature battle uh, in this one I imagine as a uh, composition a also has uh, well it's not exactly as large cre as large creatures but pretty damn close with the uh, uh, do some gins and soul canar so uh, let's check out um, the big beaters opponent here namely my deck composition a uh, a combination between the mid-range deck uh, do some Jin's Hypnotic Spectra, so kind of the Swamp King, Singer Vampire, and then we have uh, the other part of the deck that is that are Underworld Dreams, in combination with Wheel of Fortunes and Time Twister. After sideboard, we can get in additional burn, we can get in sushis for additional mid-range threats, and there's also quite a large removal en element in this deck with disenchant, sinkhole, salt plowshares, uh, just everything uh, ready to bomb whatever it comes up against. So two very aggressive decks here. Uh, it's going to be a bit of a boxing match, I imagine. Let's uh, jump straight in to the first match. Or round, as it were, in this no holds barred creature battle. So, composition A is on the left here. And uh, Trolls on that big beater deck on the right. As a roll off. Now that playmat, he won that from the Tournament of Dominion Day. Trolls usually plays uh, Power Monolith, so he's some, on something new today. Uh, uh, I remember coming into this game, I was almost positive I was against the Power Monolith. A very, very different matchup where you have to kill the other guy really fast before he gets his combination going. Uh, and just fireballs you for infinite damage. Um, but I was in for a surprise here. So far, nothing out of the ordinary. Mox into a time walk. Nice start, though. Dark Ritual. Oh, Soul Canal the Swamp King, turn one. <laughs> I wasn't really... Hot damn. Okay, uh, different uh, different beats here. That's not the power monolith I usually see this guy on. And no... Was that a scrubland? Yeah, that's a scrubland. So we have white mana, but... I should probably have Source of Plasha there if I had the opportunity, because now he's untapped and has double blue. Oh, playing Wheel of Fortune. As a fast effect, I just disenchant his uh, Mox. I didn't have a Source of Plasha in hand. I'm not sure about this play, actually. I get a full new hand. Uh, but of course, he gets to replenish his hand as well. He has a nice big card advantage here because he used so much. And coming in with a Soul Canal for 5 points of damage here. Yeah, he used so many cards to get the Dark Ritual and stuff to get uh, Soul Canal out so soon. So now he has a full new hand. And the pressure is relentless here. Soul Canal turn 1. But I got seven new draws, so we might have some removal here. Nope, but we have a balance. Okay, so that's another part of remove, uh, another way to remove that. Both players have three lands, and he needs to discard a bunch of cards here. Uh, three cards, I think. I'm discarding them. And okay, I punch in with the factory, putting him down to 16 points of life. Volcanic Island coming out. Now he counter punches me here with a red mana untapped, so he might have a bolt, and a city of brass untapped, so he might have this chance. Soft plushers, who knows? So, probably not a good idea to run your factory into that uh, wall right there. I don't know. I do have a lot of mana, so if I don't have anything else to do, I could do that just to draw some removal. Or to call his bluff, as it were. Underworld Dreams, though. Okay. So getting him down to 15, but I'm actually at 12, so I'm keeping the factory back uh, just to block his factory. I don't know how much burn he has, I don't know what his strategy is. Black Lotus, Underground Sea, coming out of the big beater here. Let's 
seems like he's cracking that lotus. Giving it a good thing. What is this? Oh my god, <laughs> equal baller 7-7 seven, seven flying. If he gets in, I'll lose my entire hand. That is epic. But that that's what you can do with, with power. I mean sometimes you can get okay, soft power showing it though. But he gets seven life, so he's well ahead here in life. At least uh I have the underworld beams to ping him, sorta bit. Um Getting down a factory. I'm putting down a Dusum Jin. And now I attack with the factory because I have the Dusum Jin to block him. I need to work fast here. I don't know if he has a lot of burn in this deck. Um so Trying to punch in as much as possible. He strip mines one of the factories here, keeping the other factory back just to block my factory. I'm down to 10. Some Jin pinging me. Now using the City of Brass and System Recall. Okay. He's at 18, so it's a long way to go here. Okay, now attacking with both. No, keeping the factory back. Attacking with the Dusum Jin. Getting in for 5. Goes fast with that Dusum Jin. Oh, sorry. No, I changed it and blocking. Attacking with the factory as well. Now I disenchant his factory when he tries to block me. So, two more points of damage here. Playing a bit fast and loose, but this is a pretty casual tournament, I think. Mox coming down. Library coming down. I am well outside uh, the library ra uh, range anyway, so. Oh, yeah, he, he got one point of damage from that uh, Underworld Dreams, so. After the next attack, he'll be so far down in life that he'll have a hard time uh, getting out of it because of the Underworld Dreams. Down to three. Now Wheel of Fortune, oh my god. We're actually drawing here, seeing if he can play something as a fast effect before he dies. Yeah, and then he realizes the Underworld Dream has killed him. Seven points of damage going down to minus four <laughs> or something like that. So creatures punching in, Underworld Dreams gets out, Wheel of Fortune finishes the game. Composition A, uh, making the combination. Oh, it's strategy work here. Relentless pressure. But some big, hefty creatures here. Soul Canal, the Swamp King, turn one. And Nickel Bolas uh, in the mid game. Round two. Uh, I don't know what I've sideboarded in or out here. Can't remember. We'll see after the match. I think I'll, I'll show it. Okay, he has a Stone Rain in hand. He's actually Mulligan in here. All right. I'll just. Uh, Cut a bit forward while he shuffles through that deck. He's mulliganing down to uh, six cards, I believe. He draws a new hand here. Let's hope that he gets something worthwhile. Okay, he's put in a red blast. Off the sideboard and a time organ hand. Oh, Library of Alexandria, turn one here. Getting that down. He is on the play though, so not within draw range. And he's also mulliganed. And I have a library as well. And I can draw with that immediately. Should probably keep some cards back here. Chooses not to though. Wants to keep uh, the red banner up for a red blast, I think. To be able to counter and insist a recall or something. Uh, I'm fine with that. I'm just going to sit back here and uh, ride that library as long as possible. Time walking. I think he should have waited with that until he was within library range, but okay, he's. Oh, he's getting out of book. Okay, so he'll draw with the book to get into library range as quickly as possible here. Another strategy, also viable, I suppose. So. Can't have that. Mind twisting his hand. <laughs> That's a control magic uh, as well. He put that in there probably after the sideboard uh, to nick a juice and gin or soul canar. This is a big creature battle after all. But it's not all bad. I mean, he has that book, uh, so he can replenish his hand. And uh, I think I'm outside library range here. No, no, I'm not. Okay, so we have parity, drawing two cards each turn, both of us. Soul ring. What's this? Oh, soul canar. <laughs> <laughs> out of composition A here. So yeah, legendary creatures on both sides. Let's see if uh, we have a big fella to block it. Oh no, but we have a stone rain on my library, so no more library party for me. Though, there's this thing that Soul Kana actually has Swamp Walk and he has that nice Badlands up there, so uh, he can't block my Soul Kana with the factory. Getting something a good thing here. Need to make something add up. Uh huh. <laughs> What's going on here? 
Okay, circle protection red. Okay, I obviously put that in there. It's, it's great against all the legendary creatures because they have red in them, like Soul Canal and Nickel Bolas. Then a Spectra coming out, getting a point of life from that uh, Humanitic Spectra because of Soul Canal. He, gains, uh, he gives me a life each time a black spell is cast. Then he swap walks in for five points of damage. Go Soul Canal. Okay, Big Beater drawing another card with the book, getting down a bad lands. Another factory out of composition A here. Activating the factory, getting in with everything here. Blocks my factory, I pump my factory, he pumps his factory, we trade factories, I get in for seven and he and nicks a dark ritual from his hand. Now he tutors. Now I should get a point of life from that, but I think we rectify this at a uh, at a later point in the game. What will he take here? Needs to get rid of the Stol Canar, that's for sure, because he can't be blocked. He uses Ancestor Recall instead, trying to draw into something. Dark Ritual. Do some gin. Yeah, okay. That actually make me more life. One from the Dark Ritual, one from the Tutor, and one from the Do some gin. That's three more points of life here. I get two of them. Now getting another point of life from the Deucem Gen. I cheated myself out of one point of life here, but it doesn't matter. I attack with both. Now he realizes, oh, he can't block. <laughs> he can't block Soul Canar. Uh, so I won't even bother with the Sorcerer Plowsharing his Deucem Gen because the Deucem Gen kills him in, in his upkeep. Uh, he had played the Deucem Gen in, in, in order to block my Soul Canar, the Swamp King, I think. Or so it turned out. But feeling pretty secure. I had the Blue Blast in hand, had the Sorcerer Plowshaw in hand, didn't feel a need to use any of them because uh, I'll get in for seven unblockable uh, damage here. A flying spectra and a ninja Stolkana sneaking through the, the swamps here. Putting him down to one point of life and then do some gen ends him. Shivan Dragon, Demonic Hordes, and something else in hand. Yakmoth Demon. <laughs> I like this deck. Pretty damn cool. Also a pretty spicy brew. Uh, like the first one. Uh, but very very punchy, fast mana, big creatures, uh, ready to rock. So I took in a spirit link against some of all the creatures just as additional removal, a circle protection red and a blue blast. Uh, blue blast works well against a burn but can also be used to destroy uh, legendary creatures that has blue in them. Took out uh, like slight splashes here, uh, Senko, Disenchant and a Spectra to get the additional removal in. So that was the sideboard strategy. Turned out all right. To composition A, took this one, two to zero, and advancing through this tournament with a, a four to zero uh, score at this point. But obviously, uh, the farther we advance, uh, the more spiky decks we'll run into. Let's see what composition A runs into in the next match. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next battle.